Um, it's made to be able to be processing uh, up to 15 rolls per hour, and it was converted to use black and white chemicals. So, so hold on a second, hold on, hold on. So that's a machine yeah. for doing black and white. And yeah. Traditionally, so before you got this machine, what were you doing? Developing everything by hand using D76 and Kodak Rapid Fix. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about black and white developing in a lab, but this isn't just any lab. We're at Photodom here in Brooklyn in New York. They have a special machine that actually processes black and white film automatically and in bulk. Yes, that's very interesting because typically black and white film at labs is developed by hand and you have to break out your film. So if you've got a ton of HP5, a ton of Kodak T-Max and whatever else, each one of those typically is developed individually because they each have different processing times. At Photodom, they've got a machine where you can throw literally whatever you want in there and using their kind of secret sauce. It's not really a secret, but using their secret sauce, you can develop all that film together at the same time using the same exact chemicals and the same exact developing time. And the results are legit. Let's go ahead and check it out. What's up? Yo, what's going on? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you? Going good. Um, what are we doing today? <laughs> uh, I hear you got this crazy machine where you can automate black and white processing. Yes, we actually do. So we have a machine that's converted in the Ritsu machine that um, traditionally is to process C41 yeah. film, but it was converted to process black and white film. And it's pretty cool because it's a small machine, it uses a regular 120 volt plug-in, you can have it in your house if you wanted to. Okay. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. Let's do it. Yep, I'll show you this. So you All right. Here. So this is our lab. This is where all the processing happens. So this day is where magic happens. Um, the machine that we're going to be talking about today is right back here. So traditionally, we do have a normal C41 color machine, which a lot of labs do use. Um, this one is um, pretty standard. Naritsu is a pretty big brand. It's a Japanese company. And it allows you to process film in a very uh, efficient and um, I would also say efficient, but also very precise. Like, so you make sure yeah. that the results stay the same. Um, black web machine that we're using though, this one is a smaller version of this one. Um, it's made to be able to be processing uh, up to 15 rolls per hour and it was converted to use black and white chemicals. So, so hold on a second, hold on, hold on. So that's a machine yeah. for doing black and white. And yeah. Traditionally, so before you got this machine, what were you doing? Developing everything by hand using D76 and Kodak Rapid Fix, doing everything just hand by hand. We, so we'd have to separate everything by times, put everything organized how it is and it'd yeah. take a long time. Uh, especially because people tend to drop off a lot of random black and white rolls. So oh. maybe like one HP5 and then one SFX film or something <laughs> completely different. So it would take a lot longer because we have to group everything five times. Yeah. Um, we still do 120 film by hand, so we still hand process that. But for 35 millimeter, we expedite that process and gotcha. everything comes out perfectly dry, perfectly exposed. Yeah. Like for example, this is a random customer's rolls, HP5 plus. So you can see kind of the results here. Yeah. And if I show you like another random one, you'll probably see this some um, probably a different type of film. Let's see. So you can do any kind of film in here then. Doesn't any kind matter. of film. Yep. This is 3200. So look at that exposure. Wow. Looks okay. the same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just interesting because when uh, I first got the machine, the guy that converted it, I was asking him, I was like, so how does times work? How do things yeah, like yeah. that work? And he was kind of just like, just put the rolls in, it'll do it. He had like a really thick Russian accent. He's like, just put the rolls in, it'll come out perfectly. And I'm like, uh, I guess, I mean, I, I did it. I throw some stuff in when I first got it. I throw in like Agfa 50 ISO film. I was like, let's see how this looks. Perfect, punchy, really contrast. Then I throw in like 3200 Kodak. Also really high grain, about, about the same thing though. It was really interesting. But what I've come to realize about the machine, what makes it um, able to be doing um, films without really checking the, without changing the times yeah. is because we use T-Max Developer. Okay. And so if you know anything about T-Max Developer, it's a really high contrast, I mean, it's a really sharp developer, but uh, what's cool about it is that the times are a lot the same. So if you okay. look at like a film like HP5 and film like Tri-X, the times are probably like 25 to 30 seconds difference. Yeah. It's not much of a difference that it won't really affect the images, the contrast of the images. Yeah. So that's what makes this a really beautiful machine because it can just be like thrown in and it will just develop. Um, before we process, I'll probably replenish it to show you kind of how the process works with us putting new chemicals yeah. in. And then um, I'll throw a roll in, you'll see kind of how it comes out. So this thing is automatic. You can do multiple rolls at once. It dries the film. Yep. And you can use the same developer for everything. Yes. <laughs> it's really smart also because the machine also replenishes the chemicals when it needs to. So yeah. um, after it finishes a roll, it pretty much expels those chemicals out the machine. Yeah. And it uh, pushes new fresh chemicals into the, into the tanks. Oh. 
So if you look at the machine here, kind of break it down, there's um, pretty much two tanks here yeah. that Zinx works off of. The top tanks here, these are the working solutions. So this is actually what's developing the, the film. Yep. I'll turn this off so you don't get a lot of uh, sound. So the uh, tanks up here are the working tanks. Yep. Um, normally this would be developer, bleach, fixer, 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 um, and stabilizers. Yeah. But because it's um, doing just black and white, we don't need bleach. We just use that as a second developer, yeah. which increases developing time. Gotcha. So this is developer one, developer two, and then this is a fixer, fixer, the third fixer, which was traditionally it was a stabilizer, but we yeah. transferred it to a fixer, um, a fixer tank. And then these three here are all the stabilizer. A stabilizer, as you know, is just soap and water, kind of. Yeah, it's just yeah. to wash it, to make it clean. And um, once it comes out, it'll come out completely dry. So that's, that's what makes wild. this machine really efficient because um, honestly, I don't know what we'd do without it. And honestly, I shoot a lot more black and white because of it, yeah, because yeah. I hate having to spend my time like developing black and white by <laughs> hand, to be honest. So where'd you get this machine? This is not something that everybody has access to. No, this is not something everybody has access to. I got this from a really knowledgeable um, Noritsu tech, and um, he's pretty much been in business for the last 30, 40 yeah. years. He's been doing this forever. He's even telling me like, back in Russia, I used to just like throw anything into his machines and it would just work out perfectly <laughs> fine. I'm like, I wish I had his, his array of knowledge, honestly. I found this guy originally um, because when, I, when we first got out this machine, it came broken, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the for three months, I spent my time learning how to fix this machine until I called this guy. And he was like, he came by, showed me little things about the machine and yeah. I'm fixing it myself. What's the beauty of it? So now I feel like I'm much more capable of understanding this machine and this machine as well, because they're kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. They're just giant conveyor belts. Yeah, exactly. So the conveyor belts with liquid in them. So you just, it kind of just sends a roll through, snakes it in, and it comes right out fully dry. So that's the cool thing about it. They have a built-in dryer, which is this entire compartment here, and it just dries the film at you know optimal temperature, and it comes out perfect. So it's a cool thing about like a machine like this, because yeah. you don't have to worry about you know, results being iffy, you don't have to worry about certain things like that. There's things that we do maintain it on a weekly basis and monthly and things like that. Mm -hmm. As far as like changing up the chemicals, changing out filters. Um, but besides that, the machine kind of runs on its own. Yeah. Um, in here right now, we had a fan running because, you know, in the summertime in Brooklyn, it gets so hot. And of course, as you know, black and white film has to be at 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So we just leave the fan running all day to kind of yeah, keep yeah. the machine cool because in the summertime, it does get kind of difficult to keep the machine uh, at that stable temperature. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, cool. Before we continue, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. So I actually just got up and running with my Squarespace site and it was quite painless. There's a couple of things I really like. First off are the blogging features. I really love how quick and easy it is to set up a blog and include photos, videos, links, all of the above. And I think every photographer should set up a blog so they can discuss their images, post them in high res, and just have a way to connect with their potential audience. I also really love the galleries on posts. You can basically upload a bunch of photos in sequence and have them pop up next to each other in a specific way. And you can click through and look at them. This is a really good technique for storytelling, especially with your images. Instead of just posting them one by one, you can put them together in a gallery so that they all have a common theme and interest. Lastly, I'm quite excited about the online stores. I haven't set this up yet, but I'm going to, and my hope here is to sell my prints. All photographers love selling prints, and this is a really cool way to do so in a very personalized, direct way. So make sure to head to Squarespace for a free trial. And if you use my link, Let's squarespace.com slash to get to note down. you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Uh, my name is Dominic Lewis, and I'm the owner of Photodom NYC, a full-service analog camera store based in Brooklyn, New York. So uh, we do everything from selling cameras, um, developing film. We also rent cameras, and we have a photography studio here as well. So we do um, rentals as well for the photography studio. And um, just recently, we just launched printing services. So we'll be printing uh, large format photos as well for clients as well. And how did the lab get started? Tell me, tell me the quick backstory here. So the backstory of it all, uh, Photodom NYC. Photodom kind of started out for me as an alias. Um, I use it as an internet name for Instagram for years. and. Um, quickly started to learn that a lot of my following was more photographers than it was um, other types of people. So I thought in my mind that I would create a brand that would more, you know, be more um, in tune or more for the people who look like me. So I started out initially making clothing and accessories and things. I remember I'm making like t-shirts and hats and things for photographers. And that quickly started growing into a, a full line of products that we currently offer now. Um, so started back in I'll say 2015 is when I first started using that name specifically for the brand. And um, up until this day now, we offer a lot of services. So um, it was a kind of a long journey because uh, going throughout pandemic and things like that, that kind of halted a lot of the things I wanted to do ended up becoming perfect timing for it all as well. <laughs> Dope. 
And uh, I know you do a lot of photography yourself. What, uh, what do you focus on? What are you shooting with? What kind of subjects? Yeah, so my primarily uh, my primary focus of work is documentary photography. Um, I currently run a page called Document Brooklyn, which is a project of mine that's an ongoing project that's uh, documenting neighbors, neighborhoods of Brooklyn that are um, in the process of change right now, so low gentrification in short terms. Um, so a lot of my work focuses on people, places, and uh, people in neighborhoods that are specific to different neighborhoods of Brooklyn. So, and any, anything coming up soon that you want to share with everybody? What are your ambitions here? My ambitions? Oh, that's a good question. My ambitions, uh, honestly, my main focus for this next year would be education. I want to definitely put on a lot of education for um, different photographers to get that same type of um, knowledge out to people. Just kind of spread the knowledge, honestly. It's kind of my main goal of this next year. Um, this isn't traditionally used. A lot of people don't use this chemical because it's kind of outdated. And it's, a lot of people tend to say that it's, um, it does smell really bad. It does, but uh, <laughs> it, is, it is a really good fixer because it lasts a long time. Like it really does a great job yeah. of fixing. Uh, this is the catcher. This is where all the film goes once it's completed. Yep. It'll kind of go into this bin here. Um, open this up. So you see there's a lot of moving parts in here. Yeah. And this is pretty much everything um, that the, that's gonna go through the machine. And here you have this individual racks. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn this off, this drive switch, so it stops moving. And then these are rack stoppers. You just pretty much keep the racks in, in line. And um, when I open this up, you'll see how the actual rack will look. So this is a developer rack. And when it goes in, it's gonna go in on this side through this hole go all the way down to the bottom of the rack, yeah. snake all the way up to the top of the rack, and then these rack stoppers are gonna make it go into the next rack. The next one, yeah, yep, yeah. and it's gonna go into rack number two, which is the next developer, then the fixer, fixer, and if you see in here, these are all kind of, um, this is a fixer as well. We changed this, it's not a stabilizer, but yeah. it's color coded to make it very easy for yeah, yeah. anyone to kind of manage. Um, and this last rack here, this is actual squeegee rack. So when it goes from the stabilizer to the last rack, it'll squeegee the film, dry as much as possible, and then it'll actually um, go into the dryer, go down into it, come up, and it'll be drying while it's coming out. So it also makes this um, pretty easy because- Yeah, yeah, it looks um, very straightforward. Very straightforward, yeah. And these racks are all different sizes, so they can do different things. Like this is just a stabilizer rack. This is just open water. Yeah. But you see how small this rack is compared to the other one? Because it pretty much takes into account how much time needs to, it takes to go all the way down and come all the way out, yes. which is um, pretty smart because these machines will kind of do everything for you. You don't really have to worry about it doing something, you know, so. so as long that. as those racks are functioning, the machine's basically good to Functioning, go. yeah, and that's what's cool about it. It's like really simple. And then these rack stoppers, it goes into here and the snakes kind of through here. Yeah. It comes out through there. So it'll go from one rack to the next rack to the next rack. Yeah. It's kind of keep it snaking through. So I'll put these back in the rack stoppers. And I'll turn this back on. It's a drive switch that keeps it moving. And now I can start feeding it some rolls, All and right. it'll come out. It'll come out bone dry in about 13 minutes. Um, load the machine up. There's already a roll in there from last time. I'm just gonna feed the roll in downward here. This is good old Ilford HP5. So it feeds downward into the racks, and then it just sets right there. Once I close this, there's no going back. So um, what's the good thing about the machine? You have to make sure you're having the right film in there, or yeah. it will be upset. Close it. It's gonna lock it, it's gonna pull that film all the way out and then go through the racks and then it's gonna cut it. I think we developed a little bit of everything, honestly, in this machine. Honestly, yeah, yeah. one thing that's really cool that we did the other day, uh, Kodachrome, for example. Kodachrome, of course, you can't do color processing for it anymore, yeah. but um, I put it in the black and white machine and it comes out black and white. So you can actually develop Kodachrome with this afterwards you, you finish. You get a negative or a positive? You get a negative. A negative, yeah. Yeah, you get a nice black and white negative and after you'd have to rinse it to get all that an additional gunk off of it. Gotcha. It's, like, it's, like a, it's like something similar to Remjet that's yeah, on the yeah. Kodachrome film. Um, so you have to rinse that off and then I've developed film on here and I've given people back Kodachrome but they were like, oh, I can't get this process anywhere. I'm like, well, we can do black and white if you want to come by and try it out. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, you know what? It's this or nothing. So <laughs> <Fair laughs> why not try it out and see what you can get from it? So it works out pretty efficiently and um, very interesting. It works out on like almost every film type that I can think of. I've done Ilford, Kodak, um, Fomapen, Arista, yeah. almost everything, JCH film, um, the new film, um, Savima Photo, which is like a Ukrainian film. Yeah, yeah. It's really thin. So even that film will be very hard to get into reels. Yeah, yeah. Thank God we have this because it'll just go right in. I don't have to think about it. <laughs> See what's going on with this machine. And literally, as you said that, the roll just came out. 
it makes a lot of beep. So this is an HP 5 roll, and as you see, fully developed. Yeah. And it's dry, so it comes right out. And we can actually scan this whenever we're, you know, whenever because it's fully dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. So this is what I've noticed uh, about this machine. It does a really good job at processing almost any type of film, um, even some films that require special, um, special developers. It's always been a fun thing to be like, let's see if it develops, and it always, always develops. That's the beauty of black and white film, that it's very consistent. Yeah. Black and white has a lot more latitude for developing, yeah. and that's the beauty of it with this machine, because it allows the speed of our workflow tremendously without yeah. having to like do it everything by hand. It's interesting, I feel like a lot of people, especially people who shoot like only black and white, have like a formula that they like. Yeah. Specific film with this developer, mm -hmm. hold one stop, and you know, extra contrast here, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. This is the basically exact opposite of that yeah. line of thinking. And exactly, it dumbs no it right down. Answer, you know, but. That's what I love about the machine because it makes things a lot simpler and it allows me to be like, like things aren't as complicated as it looks. You yeah. can step it down and honestly, some of the things that you learn through online, um, like the internet and stuff, it isn't always exactly what it is. Like there's a lot more latitude in that, yep. in, in how that works. Um, the one thing I learned about this machine is like the TMAX developer. So now even for 120 black and white, we use TMAX developer because it saves us so much time. We can group a lot of different films together that don't that you don't usually get grouped together and develop it all, and it'll get all the same great results. Mm -hmm. That's why our chemical um, for for black and white processing we only charge six dollars a roll, no matter what type of film it is, and that helps us keep the cost down yeah. as much as possible. Um, people are like six dollars a roll in the same day. How's that impossible? I'm like, well, <laughs> we got a machine for it, and they're like, I don't understand how that works, but Here I'm gonna is. drop it off. The only thing that we can't do in this machine is push and pull unfortunately but it does do a great job at developing film at the box speed of what yeah. it is okay so. well i'm glad you got this because that that is a very fast turnaround for black and white yeah and it is the price is good when i first got into sending rolls to to the lab huh. i was always surprised that black and white costs more yep. to get developed than color yeah because the hand process exactly. so it physically takes more time for them to have a lab tech put it out together yeah. group different things and it takes a lot longer too i know some yeah. labs take up to two to two weeks to a month sometimes yeah. I've seen some labs have hundreds of rolls that they're like going through one by one by one and I'm like, oh my God, if we had to do that, it would be a lot longer. So I'm very grateful to have a machine like this to just kind of like breeze through stuff. We don't really have to think about it much. Um, the machine kind of self-operates itself and it self-manages itself. So when it needs new things, it pushes it to the top. And all we do is pretty much change out the chemicals every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we do just to keep the chemicals fresh. Um, and we change out the filters, which are um, honestly, it filters out all the like the residue fixer and all that residue stuff that comes off the film. Yeah. So it's the beauty of it. Um, and the, the filter is actually located right up here. So we just like change these out every couple, gotcha. you know, every two weeks we change out the filters and it keeps the chemicals super fresh, which is ideal for this machine. But um, yeah, that's about all for this. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for letting us come check this out. This is pretty cool. I think a lot of labs are going to get jealous when they see this. Yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot of labs, if they want resource on where to find it definitely contact us i'll tell you exactly who to get it from and um this machine is really cool because it's already you know it's already modded done everything for you he'll give you pretty much a run through how to do it and uh, if you're able to get one of these i definitely advise getting it because yeah. um, the only things else that existed in the past were fuji there to, i think there was a fuji black and white machine there was an Oprah black and white machine which those are very hard to come by i'm sure yeah. a lot of labs know that already <laughs> word up all right man have a good one i'll see you next time yeah we'll see you next time all right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please go ahead and click that like button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. To the next one, I'm out.